People keep asking me if Genshin Impact is worth even playing. I mean, it's a free-to-play game, guys, so obviously if you want to download it and try it for yourself, that's an easy option. You don't have to spend money, you don't have to do anything other than download it and jump into the world. Now, there's a lot to explore, and this world is not stingy. There are chests, there are puzzles, there are enemies all over the damn place. Even on this mountain that I'm standing on, there were hundreds of little puzzles. There's caves to explore, places to mine, lots of stuff to do. If you enjoyed Breath of the Wild, you will love this game. If you like anime kind of characters, if you like spells, magic, combos, passives, any of that stuff with the RPG elements, this is pretty well the perfect game. I've been having a blast, but I want to go in depth on is Genshin Impact worth it? As I said before, if you like to explore, if you like Breath of the Wild, this game is for you. If you want to just veg, if you just want to zone out and go from little activity to little activity, this game is great. There are chests all over the place, there's things to explore, enemies to fight, and it's pretty basic. You don't have to turn your brain on too hard if you don't want for a lot of the content, which is honestly really nice. It's relaxing, there's sometimes peaceful music while you're figuring out puzzles and unlocking different things, but then there's epic moments like this, and this was the one that really turned me on to the game. I ended up finding a world boss, and this thing had full-on mechanics. It had attacks I needed to dodge, area of effect, there were openings where I needed to attack, and other moments where I needed to just run. This one I have to close the gap and attack, and I thought that this was fantastic. And this was only one of the bosses that I ended up finding. This fight alone made me realize, dang, this game has potential. While there's the basic exploration, there's also cool fights like this. There's a, a story boss, I don't want to talk about it right now because I don't want to spoil it. But there's actually mechanics, things you gotta dodge, things you gotta know, and you can learn and master these fights, which I think is really cool. They drop good stuff for upgrading, and so it feels rewarding to take on a boss like this, which can, you know, one-hit you if you play like an idiot, but it had full-on mechanics. Look at this attack here. The diversity of attacks was really cool. First it was slamming, then it was lasers, and now it's literally a bullet hell on the floor where you gotta dodge or else you get run over by these things. And I think that this is a pretty good indicator of some of the boss design. Uh, I've only fought a couple of them so far, but this is a free-to-play game, and this is pretty fire, and it's really fun to do. The next big thing that really impressed me or has me interested in this game is the Spiral Abyss. This is a multi-floor dungeon where you make your way as far as you can. Now, early game, you're not going to make it too far because we simply aren't high enough level. But the further you get, the better rewards. And it's very, very rewarding. Even as a first-time player only getting to the first four or five floors, you get some insane rewards early game, such as armor and upgrade materials. Now, there's also a buff and debuff system similar to a roguelike game, so you're going to have a different experience depending on what characters you're using and depending on which enemies spawn, and it's actually really, really cool. I think that this entire system is going to be a lot of fun as you get leveled up and you keep pushing, and it's kind of a fun time trial. It's very hectic. You can jump in, grind against, you know, a bunch of enemies, and this thing actually changes the rewards and enemies each week. Now, in about 16 hours from the time I'm making this video, it's going to be all reset. So I'm going to have another chance at it uh, later today or tomorrow. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. Will it get repetitive? Maybe down the road. But for right now, I think it's a really cool activity, even if I am getting stomped by enemies much higher level than myself. There's lots of different achievements to do and little tasks to complete while you're playing, and a lot of it happens pretty naturally, so it feels very rewarding at the start. Will that continue long term? I don't know. Will we run out of things to do? Yeah, maybe after some time, but I'm 20 or 30 hours into the game already. I've been grinding it on stream, twitch.tv slash mtashed, and, uh, you know, I've been having a major, major blast. But you have to remember, it's free, so download it. Like, like seriously. If you don't like it, just get rid of it, but for right now, this game kicks major butt. There's also a lot of things to unlock, like recipes for food, and then you can actually cook the food to get bonuses to your attack and health, allowing you to push harder content earlier, and so if you are going to be running around and getting different materials, if you're going to be farming, if you're going to be hunting down in the nooks and crannies of the game, you can craft food then to optimize your characters for later. You can also purchase a lot of the ingredients for just in-game money, and that's actually another thing I wanted to talk about. 
I feel like I've never really needed to spend money so far. I did spend money to get some characters because I want to make content, but I want to just show you something here. Now, one of my little bounties or quests was to level up a weapon to level 40, and I also had to enhance some of my armor or artifact pieces to level 4. Now, as you can see in the footage, I'm using some of my old gear to level up my better gear. And all of these items that I'm using, I just found them through natural play. I didn't have to buy them, I didn't have to do anything special. It was just kind of a natural progression as I went. And that's the one thing I've noticed, is you get bounties, you get tasks, you get things to do, and it flows pretty nicely with the game. I never felt like I was forced to farm. I never felt like I was forced to do anything that I didn't want to. It all just kind of happened naturally, and I was really happy with that. Now, the nice thing is, is I've never felt the need to spend money either. It doesn't feel like some of the games where you run out of energy and you can't actually play. If you wanna go spend 100 hours on this in a month, you can. You can spend 200 hours in a month. I mean, maybe just make sure that you're not overindulging, but you could play this game pretty well indefinitely, make really good progress, and you don't have to spend a dime. It's kinda like Path of Exile in that way so far. I put hundreds of hours into Path of Exile before I spent a dollar. And it's kind of because I owed the devs, or I felt like I owed the devs. I think that this game might be similar in the fact that you can get very far, you can do a lot of cool stuff, you can enjoy the game, and if you want to spend money later, you can. But for right now, it seems pretty damn reasonable for free-to-play players. Just yesterday, when I unlocked the Spiral Abyss, there was an activity where you could unlock a great character. This is actually one of the main characters on my team for free. You didn't have to spend anything, you just had to beat this content. So if you put in the time, you level up your characters, there's most likely going to be other activities like this where you can get characters for free. You unlock a couple of story characters that are fine, they're not the best, but at the end of one of the big missions, I actually got, like, an S-tier healer. She's so damn good. I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to show it, but I loved her. She's great. And uh, I got it for free. And so I've got two characters now, actually it's like five, that are all free, and I haven't had to spend any money on them. I said this in my other video as well, there's also some promotions going on and kind of celebrations for how many people are joining this game. So they've been giving out a bunch of free currency and character pulls. There's like 30 or 40 or even closing in on 50 pulls that you can get. So if you make a new account, you can most likely get at least a couple of characters. You can get one for damn sure, uh, automatically Noel, but then... You know, you could get some other ones from the other polls. Maybe you get a S tier, you know, five star character. And again, you could probably make a new account and just roll them again. Just be careful you don't get banned because I, I think that they don't want you doing that all day long because it is a little cheesy and people could be selling accounts, yada, 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 yada. But if you are jumping in as a free to play player, I think that it's pretty damn fair. And I wanted to just make sure I showcase that because I know a lot of people look at games like this and they go, okay, but how much money do I have to spend? Honestly, I think you could jump in for free and have a damn good time. That being said, I know that these games can be a little bit addicting. I know that they get you rolling characters for free and then you think, hey, maybe I'll just spend a bit of money. I honestly would wait right now. Uh, it does seem a little, a, a little cheap, right? I think it's like literally less than 1% chance to get a five-star character and I think that's a little BS. I spent the money, uh, I did an actual uh, a video on if it's pay to win and I talk about a lot of the same stuff here. I show some of the roles. If you guys wanna watch that video, uh, you know, the link is down below. But for right now, I'm really happy with this game. I'm really impressed. I, I'm excited to see where it goes. And there's going to be more regions unlocking as time goes on. There's only like two regions right now, but there's a lot to explore in them. I'm excited to see future bosses. Maybe they do some kind of raid type content. Uh, but honestly, I, I, I think that this is probably going to be one of the best. I, I think they're called gotcha games. I don't really play a lot of these. It's going to be one of the better ones that's been made because, I mean, it literally feels like Breath of the Wild with anime characters. It, 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 that's the best way to describe it and the fact that you can get this for free and get pretty well the same experience as breath of the wild honestly for me i'm having more fun than breath of the wild i hated how my weapons broke in breath of the wild i hated how uh it, it felt so linear a lot of the enemies were pushovers but there wasn't really any cool combos to do like it, it just felt so basic and this adds that extra rpg layer you can do some cool combos with your team between the ice and the electric and the pyro and the wind and it just flows nicely. That being said, I gotta be honest here, these types of games typically, uh, you know, long term, 
they're going to get you. They're going to say, hey, uh, you, you, you're not going to be strong enough to beat this in time. You're going to run into these walls where your characters just aren't good enough. You better get those five-star weapons. I get that. And uh, it's something to look out for, and you need to be careful. But as it sits right now, it's been really fair overall. I haven't felt like I've been roadblocked, but it also is pretty early. I can imagine in the late, late, late game, it might start happening. But we're going to have to just see that. I think that for the first 20 to 40 hours, it's probably going to be a damn good experience for literally anyone, whether you spend or you don't. And so I think it's one of those games where you should just try it. Put in the time, see if you enjoy it. And that's pretty much it from me. I've said my piece. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I helped some of you. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.